Ian felt bad. These past few days after she returned to Igneous, she felt that she had forgotten something. It was the next morning Ian woke up. She remembered the events from last night and felt revealed that her plan actually worked. Now that she got some things off her mind, she was able to focus on the coop and some other things. Good morning, your majesty, Uraka chimed as she got inside. Slowly, Yin turned her head to the brunette. Uraka? she asked. The servant tilted her head. Yin spoke once again. I forgot about Bim. So, after she bathed and dressed, Yin rushed outside and went around the palace to look for the little Pomeranian she had, um, sadly forgotten. Planning the coop had kept her busy, and she had forgotten about her little pet. The Pomeranian didn't cross her mind. Now, she felt bad. It doesn't matter that the dog was from Bakugo and that the Pomeranian sort of looked like him. Yin loved her little pet. Yin searched around the palace, and even after, even, yeah, even after asking of the nobles around, one noble told her that they had saw the Pomeranian in a certain corridor. Yin went through, and she realized that she had never went to this part of the palace. Suddenly, Yin heard small footsteps. She looked ahead to see the Pomeranian at the end of the corridor. A big smile lit her face. Here, boy. Bim turned to look at Yin. The woman started to walk towards the dog. He recognized her and started to run towards her while barking. When Yin felt that she she's close to her pet, she was immediately sn- snatched off yeah, off the moment because another person apparently and immediately picked up Bim. Yin looked up to see that it's Lady Cammy. Your Majesty, she curtsied, the dog wrapped in her arms. It looks like it suddenly forgot about Yin and gave all of its attention to Lady Cammy. Lady Cammy? Yin acknowledged. I see that you took care of my pet. The fr- the frond lady, yeah, the frond late haired lady shifted her eyes to the fluffy creature. Oh yes, the time you went home, I found him all alone and abandoned. I couldn't leave him there, so I took him. That's very nice of you, Lady Cammy. It was terrible of me to suddenly forget about him. Yin said. I was so worried that he might not have been taken care of, but now I feel relieved to see that you took him. How will I be able to pay you? (laughs) Oh no, don't worry about that, your majesty. Are you absolutely sure? Oh, of course. Thank you so much. Yun smiled. Can I have him back now? Suddenly, the corridor the corner of Lady Cammy's lips fell. I'm afraid he's not yours anymore, your majesty. Yin frowned and furred her, furred her brow. Uh, why not? Well, you did abandon him, your majesty. Lady Cammy said, petting Bim. Then I found him. If I asked... Oh, I asked if I could have him, and I was given the permission. He's my pet now. Who, who gave you the permission? His Majesty, of course. Lady Cammy spurked. I heard this little guy, yeah, I heard this little guy right here originally came from him. So, when I asked him if I could have this precious guy, he said I could do whatever I wanted. So, I took him as my own. Yin paused. She then pursed her mouth and breathed. My husband gave him to me. Oh, it's just a dog, your majesty. Lady Cammy shook her head and clicked her tongue. You can always get another one. Surely you can ask his majesty. Since, well, you two have been 
really getting along? Ian's brows creased at Lady Cammy's statement, but mostly at her tone. It sounded like there was an undying jealousy to it. What are you implying? You know words travel fast in this court. Apparently, our king and queen were so intimate last night in the halls. Talk about a bold public display. Everyone awaits an heir, and they seem to be joy about it. Ian played on, but then she couldn't help but ask why, as to why Kate, Lady Cammy tone was sour. Yin tilted her head before asking, Maybe except you, Lady Cammy. The once soft features of Lady Cammy's face contorted into a slight glare. She looks like she's mustering up all her strength. Not to show too much of her irritation. You don't like him. Do you? She gritted her teeth. I know you hate your husband, your majesty. You love him. You probably want to kill him. I could see the hateful look in your eyes every time you stare at him. And now, you suddenly share a night with him. When she said that, Yin now knows where Lady Cammy is coming from. You make it sound like I committed a crime, Lady Cammy. Surely there is nothing wrong for a married married couple to be intimate. Lady Cammy looked like she was going to shout at Yin, but she held herself by pursing her mouth so tight before uttering words again. You irritate me. And you assume me. With your jealousy, Ian said, not obvious to the, re to the reason why Lady Cammy dislikes her. Most noble ladies in the court were waiting for a chance to jump in and marry the king, as it is one of the ways to further being honored to one's noble family. Yin knew Lady Cammy's dislike for her rooted at the fact that Yin was the one who married Bakugo. And when Yin mistaken her wig for a hat, that was just the icing on the cake. <laughs> jealous? Oh, I'm not jealous. I only knew that his majesty does not deserve such an incultured and hateful wife. The queen's eyes whined at Lady Kimmy's words. Yin breathed in and out, controlling herself. Are you denying your queen, Lady Kimmy? Yin's narrowed, narrowed her eyes and roared her expression to Lady Cammy. Her tone had dropped into an authorized one. The fawn lady, the fawn noble lady, turned, oh, continued to glare at Yin. Yet she's not saying anything. I know that you want to marry the king, and you dislike me. For stealing that chance, Yin said. But whatever you like it or not, Lady Kimmy, I was the one to be betrothed to him. Lady Kimmy's glare only insignified. Yin went on. It was unfortunate for you, and I must say for me as well. <laughs> for me as well? Lady Kimmy quoted, questioning Yin. So, you admit you hate him? I do. Yin nonchalantly said, His Majesty will not be pleased to hear this. Yin smiled and nodded. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, he's not. And he feels the same, so the feeling is mutual. The noble's mouth gaped, her eyes scrunching in, Yin, yeah, scrunching in Yin's disbelief. Consider yourself lucky. You're not tied down to him, Lady Cammy. Yin said, shuffling her body to in indicate y she's done talking with her. And you can take care of my pet. He might be the only thing you'll ever receive from my husband. When Yin mindlessly scampered back to the hallway that leads... Oh, stompered back to the hallway that leads to the private dining room, she 
suddenly heard her stomach growl. She realized she hadn't eaten breakfast yet. What? Mm -mm. Deciding to push away the slight irritation from her interaction with Lady Cammie earlier, she made her way to the dining room. Its door now is full view. Yin haltered when she suddenly heard explosions, followed by her husband shouting, Fuck off, Deku! Inside. All of a sudden, the door opened and Midoriya came scampering out. The door shut behind him. He fell on the ground, as well as struck the parchments he was carrying. Some parchments had burn marks on them. Some were even torn to pieces. It scattered on the floor, and the green-haired scholar hurriedly gathered them. The female continued to walk until she stopped in front of Midoriya, lowered herself carefully on the ground, and helped Midoriya gather the parchments. Uh, your majesty! Midoriya sinked under on the ground as he addressed the queen. What happened here? Yin asked, looking at the mess. Um, Kachan has been in a bad mood since this morning, Midoriya exclaimed, still arranging the parchments. It, but it's not like it doesn't happen every day, your majesty. What triggered his temper now? It's either me or the nobles, but right now, uh, I don't know what seems to be the problem. Yin may have an idea as to what caused Bakugo to be so pissed today. <laughs> when I came to him with his paperwork, he was glaring at practically nothing, and he refused to do his work, he exclaimed further. Uh, but I insisted because of some parchments needed to be signed, he still refused, so I mentioned you, told him you could help, but he blasted the parchments and yelled to me to get out. He's some... has something bad happened between you two, your majesty? Ian shook her head and gathered the last scrapped, uh, scattered parchment, both of them raised to the floor. Nothing happened. Nothing bad happened, at least, Ian reassured. I see, Midori smiled. You and him are getting along, after all. Of course, the events from last night did not fail to reach Midoriya as well. Ian smiled. Let him be for now. I'll do the paperwork. Uh, will that be all right? Uh, of course. Thank you, Your Majesty. Midoriya bowed and greatly took the parchment from Yin. Uh, I will need to check and arrange them first. Then I will take them to your chambers. All right. Thank you as well. Midoriya bowed again and walked away. Yin looked at the doors, con contemplating whether to enter or not. In the end, she turned and decided to eat breakfast in her chambers. This morning, Karishima awoke to some pleasantness circulating about the court. Apparently, possibly, an heir will arrive soon. The nobles, especially the elders, are very happy. Karishima, although, was a little confused. Bakugo and Yin's relationship, at the moment, is rocky, and it was obvious to Karishima that they just liked each other. So, to be able to considerate their marriage was, like, a little impossible. So, after breakfast, Karishima went to go see Bakugo. On his way to the private dining room, he ran into Midoriya. The green-haired scholar was carrying a stack of burned and torn parchment. Oh, God. The scholar greeted Karishima in a rush. He had a nervous look on his face and seemed to rush with the parchment. Karishima wondered what had happened. There is doubt with Karishima if Bakugo did spend a night with Yin. But he decided to push that thought aside and instead greet his friend enthusiastically and congratulate him for the possibility of finally having an heir. But when Karishima entered the dining room, he found Bakugo glaring intently at the room. Oh god. Chairs were tossed, the table had burnt marks on them, and Scorch was still spilled on the carpet floor, along with there being shattered glass. Oh, now he knows why Midoriya was in that nervous state earlier. Ew. Naturally, Karishima asked Bakugo what happened. The blonde told him to leave, but Karishima insisted. Bakugo ignored him and continued to glare at nothing. I it's Ian, isn't it? The blonde snapped at the mention of his wife, and soon Karishima found out that nothing actually happened last night. Karishima was afraid Bakugo would start to tear the room apart. He looked so furious and mad, but suddenly Bakugo decided to go out and spar. 
So that's how Kirishima ended up watching Bakugo beat the crap out of a couple of soldiers and sparring. Yippee! It has now been like for an hour. So nothing happened? Kaminari asked beside Kirishima. He joined them earlier when he passed by. Nothing, Kirishima confirmed. Get up, fucker! Bakugo yelled as he threw the soldier to the ground once again. Well, Kaminari sighed. It's not surprising, seeing how she hates him so much. Kirishima only agreed. I wonder what would the nobles think if they found out. They are so happy about this news. Forget about them. What about him? Kaminari pointed at Bakugo. This time, the soldier decided to back out. Having beaten by the blonde, Bakugo looked over to the other soldiers who backed away so soon. Then the Bakugo clicked his tongue. Oh, then the blonde clicked his tongue, sorry. What's wrong with you? Why are you so angry? Kaminari asked as soon Bakugo approached them. He's always angry, Kaminari. No, no, I mean, why is he, you know, extra angry? Bakugo glared at them. I'm not angry. Kirishima sighed. This morning, he refused to do his paperwork and scared Midori away, and he's been sparring for an hour. It's clear He's clearly frustrated, and maybe because of Yin. Don't fucking say that name, shitty hair. Suddenly, Kaminari gasped and let out a oh sound. I think, Kaminari stated, I think he's horn. I think you're horny, Bakugo. (laughs) There was. There was a pause. Karashima looked at Kaminari, and when he proceeded what he had just said, he suddenly had the urge to laugh. Huh? Bakugo glared and started to step towards Kaminari. Well, it's obvious, right? Even I would know. From what Karashima told me, Yin rejected you. It's just obvious that you're... What the hell would you know with that fried brain of yours, Dunn's face? Bakugo snort. Karishima stopped himself from laughing and only let out a snort. I think he's right. Shut up! The red-haired male laughed slightly. Then he breathed in. Well, that seems to be the case. It's been a long time since you've had a woman, after all. I'm not... Bakugo retated, but he was cut off by Kaminari. Kirishima's right. I'll kill you, shit for brains. It's affecting your work, Bakugo. You need to do something about it, Kirishima suggested. What the fuck does that have to do with my work, huh? Just approach Yin once again. Bakugo sneered. For fuck's sakes, I can't even stand hearing that name and now you want me to go to her? Then Kaminari spoke, well, if you can't stand her and just want to get laid, there's only one solution to that. The blonde king stared at Kaminari once again for pointing out his problem. He opened his mouth to yell at him again, but Kirishima beat him to it. What are you suggesting, Kaminari? Kaminari smiled. Well, I heard this is one of Jiro's stories, but... From her travels, that most kingdoms she has gone to, the king, most kings, there do it, oh, there do it to ease their. Get to the point, Kaminari. Karishima stood. The blonde noble sighed, and then enthusiastically said, "Let's give Bakugo a mistress." Oh my god! I knew this was Just as Midoriya said, he delivered the paperwork to Yin, and all day the female was cooped up in her room. She sighed and put another parchment down. It was tiring to do the paperwork. Her duties included paperwork too, but not much like this. Yin's back is killing her too, so she decided to stand and get some back, oh, get some break. Leaving her room, she sauntered to the library to browse some new books to read. When she got there, Yin was surprised to find Midoriya in there as well. Taking a break, Yin asked. Midoriya tore his eyes off the book and looked up. Uh, your majesty, he stood and bowed. Yin nodded and at him and mentioned him to be at ease. Um, yes, I was taking a break, he said. Has his majesty decided to come out to take his work? Yin asked, hoping for a yes. Midoriya loaded his head. 
lowered his head. Unfortunately, he has not. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, more parchments arrived and he wasn't done with any other of his duties for the day. Some of the nobles are asking for him. They chased me all day, so I went to hide here. Yan smiled sadly. He's giving you a hard time, huh? She proceeded to go to a nearby shelf to pick up a book. You can be honest with me, you know. Yin said when Midoriya said nothing. The green-haired scholar sighed. Well, I couldn't say he's giving me an easy time, but yes. It's been a challenge working with his majesty. Yin suddenly thought of something. Then decided to pick out a random book and face Midoriya. What part of your job makes it hard for you to do aside from my husband barking orders? Midoriya chuckled. Well, that part is counted, but I've gotten used to it now. The hardest part, I must say. Yin watched as Midoriya held a wondered look, and it suddenly fell into a sad one. Whenever he orders for an execution, I would be the one to reply, oh, relay the order, and sometimes I regret. Her eyes softened at Midoriya. Why do you regret it? Because, your majesty, I think it's not the people's fault that they're angry at our king and wanted to start a re rebellion. He's killing them for it, Midoriya sighed. I think he's been because they've been neglecting his ma been neglected by his majesty. Neglected, you say? Midoriya's statement had perked Yin's interest, and she thinks I think that just like her, Midoriya had long noticed the conflict in the kingdom of Igneous. Yes, you saw it once, your majesty. You saw the execution, and I've t told you why it happened, Midoriya said. Kachan is so obsessed with getting back all the land with Glacia, and in result, he neglects the care for his people. If, it, if this goes on, the people will ta be taxed and worked to death. More people will rise against him, and it might not end well. Yin said nothing, and when Midoriya realized he had just ranted, he panicked. Yin noticed this and immediately reassured Midoriya. <laughs> you are all right, Midoriya, she said. I despise his neglect of the people as well, and I wish so badly that I could help them. We've tried it once, your majesty, he said, including to the past incident, and it ended up with you in danger. Yin breathed deeply, remembering how her husband tried to kill her. Midoriya was right. It won't end well this w Bakugo's way. That's why she decided to establish a coup. And now Yin had found another potential person to she would have by her side. Oh, I just remembered, your majesty. I have something to do, Midoriya said and rushed to gather his things. What if, Yin said before he could leave, what if I tell you there is a way to stop the people suffering? Midoriya stopped moving, turned to turned to a curious with a curious expression. I know that I've tried to mend Mendelina's ways and nearly got killed for it, but I know I did the right thing. Yin started and took a t few steps to Midoriya, and I am determined to continue and do what was right. Midoriya, I want to save this kingdom and its people. What are you suggesting, your majesty? Yin breathed in, deep and long, before she decided to drop her irritation. I'm planning on a coup against the king, Midoriya, and I want you to join me. In the silence of the library, Yin fell to the strain, startling atmosphere as Midoriya said nothing for a long moment. The green-haired man remained standing, frozen solid, and his eyes widened. All of a sudden, he spoke. No, that's... And before Yin could even open her mouth to reason with him, Midoriya had forgotten his things and immediately rushed outside the library. Oh no! Leaping... Yen dreaded and afraid of her exposed coop. Oh no!